Welcome, history enthusiasts, to a journey back in time. Our destination, the 19th century, a period of immense change. This was a century of transformation and upheaval. The world was evolving at an unprecedented pace. The Industrial Revolution was reshaping societies, with steam-powered machines and factories becoming the backbones of economies. This industrialization was not confined to a single continent, but spread like wildfire, altering the course of history. Next, we delve into the era of imperialism. The 19th century was a time when the powerful nations of the world extended their influence and control over weaker regions. This was not mere geographical expansion, it was the spread of culture, language and ideologies. The world was becoming a playground for the powerful. In this global game of chess, new political ideologies were emerging. Liberalism, socialism, nationalism, these were more than just words. They were the rallying cries of the masses and the tools of the ruling classes. They were the sparks that ignited revolutions and the foundations upon which nations were built. Now, imagine all these global shifts converging on one ancient civilization, China. This was a nation with thousands of years of history, steeped in tradition and proud of its heritage. But the 19th century brought with it foreign influence and power, something China had managed to resist for centuries. The Qing Dynasty, which had ruled for over 200 years, found itself grappling with these new forces. What happens when an immovable object meets an unstoppable force? You get friction, resistance and ultimately, conflict. China, with its deep-seated traditions and pride, was not ready to bow to foreign influence. The Chinese people felt their way of life was under threat, their sovereignty being eroded. The increased exposure to foreign influence and power was met with resentment and resistance. As the century drew to a close, tensions in China were at a boiling point. This sets the stage for the Boxer Rebellion. Enter the Boxers, a secret society known as the Righteous and Harmonious Fists. Their objective? To eradicate foreign influence from China. This group of fiercely patriotic Chinese citizens had witnessed the gradual erosion of their culture and sovereignty due to the encroachment of foreign powers, and they weren't standing for it any longer. The Boxer Rebellion, as it came to be known, began in earnest in the last year of the 19th century, in 1899. The Boxers, primarily peasants from northern China, were driven by a potent mix of nationalism and anti-foreign sentiment. Their goal was clear, to oust the foreign devils and their Chinese collaborators who were seen as betraying China and its millennia-old traditions. The Boxers were not a traditional army. They didn't have uniforms or formal training but they more than made up for it with their passion and dedication to their cause. They believed they were invulnerable to foreign weapons, a belief bolstered by their practice of martial arts and spiritual rituals. The rebellion started with sporadic violence in the Shandong province, targeting Christian missionaries and Chinese converts, but it quickly escalated. By the spring of 1900, the boxers had moved into the heart of China Beijing, attacking foreign legations and Chinese Christians with a ferocity that sent shockwaves around the world. The boxers' activities were not just about violence. They also sought to bring back traditional Chinese customs and values, which they felt were being eroded by foreign influence. They rallied against the adoption of Western ways, from clothing to architecture, and pushed for a return to traditional Chinese practices. The Chinese government, the Qing Dynasty, was initially ambivalent about the boxers. But as the rebellion gained momentum, the Empress Dowager Sikri, who effectively ruled China, threw her support behind the boxers. This endorsement gave the boxers a significant boost, legitimizing their actions in the eyes of many Chinese. By the summer of 1900, the boxers had gained significant traction, and their rebellion was in full swing. The boxers' next move? A 55-day siege on the international legations in Beijing. In the heat of the summer of 1900, the Boxers, a secret society driven by nationalist and anti-imperialist sentiments, turned their attention to the international legations. This diplomatic quarter, home to the foreign embassies, became a symbol of foreign intrusion and influence, a thorn in the side of the Boxers' nationalist pride. Their attack was relentless. For 55 days the Boxers besieged the legations, trapping diplomats, soldiers and civilians alike. The legation quarter was a small world unto itself, a microcosm of the international tensions playing out on a global scale, yet the foreign powers didn't cower. They responded with a show of unity that was as impressive as it was unexpected. Soldiers from eight nations, Japan, Russia, Britain, France, the United States, Germany, Italy, and Austria-Hungary, stood shoulder to shoulder defending the legations against the boxer onslaught. 
a multinational defense force, defying the odds in a desperate bid for survival. The outcome? The boxers were ultimately unsuccessful. The 55-day siege ended when an international coalition, the Eight-Nation Alliance, marched into Beijing and relieved the beleaguered legations. This marked a significant defeat for the boxers, but it was far more than that. It revealed the extent of foreign powers' willingness to intervene to protect their interests. The siege of the international legations was a dramatic display of resistance and retaliation. It highlighted the boxers' determination to expel foreign influence, the foreign powers' resolve to protect their interests, and the high stakes of this clash of cultures and powers. The siege of the international legations marked a turning point in the Boxer Rebellion, leading to international intervention. This momentous event would echo through the annals of history, shaping the future of China and its relationship with the world. The international response to the siege was swift and decisive, marking the beginning of the end for the Boxer Rebellion. The world watched in trepidation as the Boxer Rebellion unfurled in China. The siege had sent shockwaves through the international community, prompting an unprecedented global response. Eight powers, Japan, Russia, Britain, France, the United States, Germany, Italy, and Austria-Hungary, banded together, forming what would come to be known as the Eight-Nation Alliance. Their shared goal? To quell the uprising and restore order. In August 1900, the Alliance launched a full-scale offensive, culminating in the Battle of Peking. The international forces, armed with superior weaponry and strategic prowess, clashed with the boxers in a fierce confrontation. Despite the boxers' indomitable spirit and fierce determination, they were no match for the might of the Eight-Nation Alliance. The Battle of Peking marked a pivotal turning point in the rebellion, with the Alliance forces emerging victorious. In the aftermath of the battle, the boxers' resistance began to wane. Their spirit, though unbroken, was outmatched by the international forces. The rebellion that had once seemed an unstoppable force was now on the brink of defeat. The boxers, once a symbol of defiance against foreign influence, were now on the defensive, their rebellion in its dying throes. But the final nail in the coffin of the Boxer Rebellion was not a battle, but a treaty. The Boxer Protocol signed in September 1901 marked the official end of the rebellion. The agreement, enforced by the international community, imposed severe penalties on China. It demanded not only an apology from the Chinese government, but also hefty reparations. With the signing of the Boxer Protocol in September 1901, the Boxer Rebellion officially came to an end. The rebellion, once a beacon of resistance against foreign encroachment, was silenced. But the echo of its defiance still resonates in the annals of history, a testament to the indomitable spirit of the Chinese people. The Boxer Rebellion left an indelible mark on China and the world. But what is its legacy? In the wake of the rebellion, China found itself grappling with the consequences of its actions. The Boxer Protocol, signed in September of 1901, imposed severe penalties on the Qing dynasty. Beyond the hefty indemnity that crippled China's economy, the nation was forced to accommodate foreign troops within its borders, further eroding its sovereignty. The Boxer Rebellion however did more than just inflict material damage, it sparked a profound shift in Chinese nationalism. The rebellion despite its violent means and tragic end, was a testament to the Chinese people's resolve to resist foreign domination. It was the collective cry of a nation yearning for autonomy, a sentiment that would echo through the halls of history and reverberate in the hearts of future revolutionaries. The rebellion also had far-reaching implications for China's foreign relations. It marked the beginning of the end for the century of humiliation, during which China was subjected to the whims of foreign powers. The rebellion exposed the inherent flaws in this system, prompting China and the world to reconsider their approach to international relations. Moreover the Boxer Rebellion was a catalyst for the eventual fall of the Qing dynasty. The rebellion laid bare the dynasty's inability to protect China's interests and uphold its dignity on the international stage. The Qing's failure to effectively quell the rebellion and its aftermath further undermined its legitimacy, paving the way for the Revolution of 1911 and the establishment of the Republic of China. Though it ended in defeat, the Boxer Rebellion represented a significant pushback against foreign influence and its effects are still felt in China today. Despite its tumultuous history, the legacy of the Boxer Rebellion serves as a stark reminder of the resilience and tenacity of the Chinese people in their pursuit of sovereignty and dignity.